Hey guys, Eckhart Slaughter here. Hello and welcome to another episode of Star Wars Galactic Versus, the series where we do hypothetical Star Wars battles on a galactic scale. Today we are, once again, drawing from the Halo universe and we're doing a battle that pits the UNSC, the United Nations Space Command, against the Rebel Alliance. We're going to be taking both of these factions as they existed in their most desperate hours, during their last stand. For the UNSC, that's during the Battle of Earth. For the Rebel Alliance, that's during the Battle of Endor. So we're going to imagine that the forces amassed by these two factions meet in some unknown neutral space and have to fight it out to the death. I'm going to try to predict which faction would actually win. Before we begin, I do have a couple of announcements. If you guys aren't interested, feel free to just skip about a minute, a minute and a half into the video. The first is that I got a new dog, and I know that that's not strictly Star Wars related, but he does kind of look like Chewbacca. I'll probably put a few pictures up throughout the video because I really, really like him. But if you want to see more, just follow me on Twitter or subscribe to my second channel x2 where i'm sure i'm going to be posting some content featuring him and perhaps my other animal i also do just want to give a brief update on the gawkbox.com leaderboards and for those who haven't watched my past couple of videos you can go on gawkbox.com play a few games and i essentially get tipped real money so you support me without actually having to pay yourself right now kind of unsurprisingly random guy is still at the top of the leaderboard and he actually i believe anyways has an alter ego random guy who is number two so he's dominating right now if you guys want to try to compete against him or just support the channel, you can go to gawkbox.com slash Eckhart's Ladder. All right, so let's start the actual matchup. As I said, we're taking the rebel forces as they existed during the Battle of Endor and putting it against the Earth Defense Fleet that the UNSC fielded in Halo 2 and Halo 3. Now, a lot of this is going to be guesswork. We don't know specific numbers for how many ships each faction fielded. That's especially true with Halo, but I am going to do my best to try to get some realistic numbers here. We're also taking these forces at the beginning of the battle, so at their full strength and before they've sustained any losses. With that being said, let's first look at the Rebel Alliance and the fleet they put forth at the Battle of Endor. Trying to actually determine how many ships participated in the Battle of Endor, at least on the Rebel side, is not an easy task. First of all, we've got some visual inconsistencies. I mean, on one hand, when the ships jump through hyperspace, we see only one or two Mon Calamari cruisers. However, in other scenes, particularly in background shots, you can see that there are at least eight and sometimes up to a dozen other Mon Calamari cruisers. Thankfully, Star Wars Legends has clarified some of this, mostly by naming particular ships that participated in the battle, but that's certainly not an exact number and we still have to do a lot of guesswork. I have in the past done most of the legwork on this for you guys, so I'm just going to list the ships that I think probably participated in the Battle of Endor, and this is all very conservative. I know that I'm missing probably dozens, if not hundreds of ships, but I would rather undercount ships and just use ones that I've actually got a factual basis for than to make up ships that may or may not have actually been. There. Probably the premier capital ship of the Rebel Alliance during the Battle of Endor was the MC-80 Home 1 Type Stark. These were command ships, but they also operated as carriers and as frontline assault ships. There were, in fact, four MC-80 Home 1 types, despite the fact that most will think that there was only one. The Mon Calamari also fielded six MC-80 Liberty Type Star Cruisers, one MC-80A Star Cruiser, and then two stocky type unidentified Mon Calamari Cruisers. In addition, they also produced two small Mon Calamari Destroyers. I'll speak quickly and just generally about these ships. Mon Calamari designed spaceships were known for being exceptionally sturdy, and the Home 1 was probably one of the strongest, if not the strongest is besides, of course, the executor, starships that participated in the Battle of Endor. Most Juan Calamari cruisers could at least hold their own against an Imperial Star Destroyer, although they were typically outgunned. In addition to these major capital ships, the Rebel Alliance also fielded fighter carriers, one Dreadnought class heavy cruiser, two man of war ships, and we really don't know anything about these, they appeared only in the Return of the Jedi novelization, a Neutron Star class bulk cruiser, a Quasar Fire class bulk cruiser, 10 Nebulon B escort frigates, a couple of Kesselian blockade runners, 10 CR-90 corvettes, 8 DP-20 frigates, 2 Braha Tok class gunships, and 16 GR-75 medium transports. However, probably the most important part of the Rebel fleet was its fighter complex. The Rebel Alliance had 650 starfighters, comprised mostly of X-Wings, A-Wings, B-Wings, and Y-Wings. And of course, we can't forget about the Millennium Falcon. So when looking at the fleet, we see that the Rebel Alliance has about 12 large capital ships. In addition, they have about 30 ships, which would fall in either a corvette, a frigate, or a carrier. What's remaining, besides the 650 starfighters, are 10 smaller ships, which would probably just have a pretty limited strike role, and then 
16 gr 75 which would most likely exist purely for target saturation purposes. Let's now talk about the United Nations Space Command from Halo, and particularly the fleet they amassed to protect Earth during the events of Halo 2 and Halo 3. There's a few things to note right off the bat. The first is that really the backbone of the UNSC defensive effort was their orbital defense platforms. These powerful weapons, however, will not be available for this battle. The UNSC was also really decimated and really short on resources at this point. However, most of their remaining assets were at Earth, with some notable exceptions, such as Battlegroup Omnicron. In trying to determine the UNSC forces, I'm gonna have to make some really, really wild guesses. I mean, we often hear names of fleets, but don't have any sort of idea of the kind of ships within them. We know that all of the fleets at Earth were organized into the UNSC home fleet. One of the main sources we have for actually the naval strength of Earth at this point comes from a cutscene in Halo 2. We see at the beginning of the battle, when the Covenant have just attacked, that the Earth has a fleet comprised of 8 Marathon class heavy cruisers and about 67 stalwart class frigates. In Halo 2 Anniversary, the readout was changed such that it said that this was the strength of the 5th. We know from other sources that the 5th fleet was a major part of the Earth defense force, but we don't really know how important it was, whether it was the main force, a secondary force or anything else. However, it does seem clear to me that if Earth did have other ships, they didn't have that many. The fleet struggled to repel a relatively small sized Covenant task force, which actually stumbled onto Earth by accident. I mean, even with the help of their orbital defense batteries, they weren't able to destroy both of the CAS class carriers. That's really not a whole lot of firepower. So I'm not going to assume that the fleet is that much larger than what we clearly see displayed with the fifth. There are, however, other ships that are mentioned explicitly, so I'll quickly look at those. First is Battlegroup Victory, and these were the seven Charon frigates that attack the Forerunner Dreadnought as it creates the portal to the Ark. We also know vaguely of the third fleet, however this group of ships was actually wiped out elsewhere in the Soul system about 10 days before the Battle of Earth. There's also the Soul Defense Group, which appears in Halo Landfall, and that was one Marathon class ship and one small frigate. In addition, we also have four small corvettes and frigates, including the UNSC Coral Sea and the UNSC Dusk, all of which I will count as part of the total. We also see several frigates including the UNSC Forward Unto Dawn, which apparently belonged to the 7th. We don't know exactly what kind of numbers this fleet was boasting, so just to keep things fair, I'll add 10 Charon class frigates to the total. We also get some vague references to the 2nd and 16th fleets, but we learn literally nothing about them, so I don't think it's fair to make up numbers for them. However, in order to make things a little bit more realistic, I am going to give the UNSC two command ships, one Valiant class heavy cruiser and an Epoch heavy carrier. And these again will operate as the command ships for the Earth Defense Force. The combined forces of all of these ships will take into battle with them some fighters. Each Marathon class cruiser would carry 24 fighters for a total of 216. I'm also going to give each one of the Charon class frigates two long swords, although I am not sure if this is truly how they operated in canon. I'm going to give the two command ships a total of 60 combined long swords. So let's now recount the battle forces for the UNSC home. We have nine Marathon class cruisers, 70 stalwart class frigates, 17 Charon frigates, four small corvettes, two command ships, and 350 long swords. That's not many ships, and that's certainly not many capital ships, but that is realistic in a sense. We know that by the end of the Human Covenant War, the UNSC pretty much was completely out of resources. We also know that the Covenant actually did win the Battle of Earth, and if it wasn't for the Covenant schism, that Earth would have been probably completely glassed. So let's look at the actual battle now, and just to simplify, the Rebel Alliance has 12 large capital ships, 30 medium ships, 10 small ships, and then the GR-75s, and then 650 fighters. The UNSC has two command ships, nine capital ships, about 80 medium frigates and corvettes, and then 350 fighters. So let's now look at the actual battle, and I think one of the keys here is going to be the MAC weapons on the UNSC ships. So each one of these ships would have had a magnetic accelerator cannon, that's a, a MAC weapon, and these fire slugs at extremely high speeds. The larger ships like the Epoch and the Valiant may have actually had two MACs. The thing is, these are Mac Type 2s, they're not the kind used by, say, the Infinity or by an orbital defense platform. They're substantially weaker, especially when you're looking at the frigates. When you're talking about, say, a Charon class frigate, the Mac is certainly not punching through a large Covenant ship in one shot. It's probably going to take four or five just to take down its shields. The same is true also for the larger capital ships. Again, we're not going straight through in one shot, it's going to take a few hits. 
I think that this is going to remain true for most of the Alliance ships that the UNSC will be facing. We know especially that the Mont Calamari ships have very powerful and redundant shielding. I know some people in the comments are going to say, well, Star Wars shields don't actually work against projectiles. That's untrue. A ship would typically have ray shields and particle shields, with the latter protecting against kinetic objects. I'm not going to go too far into detail about the power differences between the Star Wars universe and the Halo universe. I'm also not going to rely on the Star Wars Legends power numbers because they are, quite frankly, pretty ridiculous. I will say that I think shielding on a Mon Calamari ship is, if not more powerful, at least probably equal to the strength of those on a Covenant ship. Star Wars does seem to be on a slightly higher power level. For example, I think base Delta Zero attacks would be quite a bit faster than Covenant classing. Still, the Rebel Alliance here is outnumbered, and just from a purely numerical perspective, also outgunned. Still, I do think the UNSC is at a bit of a technological disadvantage here. I mean, for example, they don't have shielding. Really, this technological disadvantage was pervasive throughout the Human Covenant War. Humanity won very few space battles cleanly, and to win they had to have both numbers and a successful first strike with their max. The thing is this, unless they can somehow get a distance advantage, when facing a rebel fleet straight up, they're going to immediately be peppered by very powerful turbo laser fire. Even the small ships like the Nebulon Bs or the CR-90s at least have a couple of double turbo lasers on them, although these weapons aren't quite as powerful as a Covenant glassing beam, for example, in my opinion at least, they will still be very damaging to the unshielded UNSC craft. In my mind, one volley from the larger Star Wars ships will very easily take out, say, a Charon or a Stalwart class for so the UNSC will fire its first few salvos, and again it's about 100 max shots from all of the ships. If the Alliance is smart, they'll position their GR-75s such that they will take most of the damage and the main fleet will continue on. Really though, I can see a large portion of the fleet being lost on these opening volleys. The problem for the UNSC though, is that I don't see them completely wiping out their fleet, and this is a problem because after firing the first MAC round, UNSC ships need to recharge, and this can take minutes to actually recharge to full strength. Star Wars ships on the other hand can fire basically at will, and right now the smaller frigates are going to be open targets. Turbo lasers don't need to recharge, and as is the case when fighting the Covenant, I think most of the UNSC ships will fall in just a couple of shots. And really, this is why the UNSC always needs to have vast numbers when going into a space battle. Star Wars also has quite a bit of a starfighter advantage. Arguably, longswords carry a heavier payload than the average Star Wars fighter, however, there are twice as many X-wings, A-wings, and B-wings than longswords. I think that those ships are more optimized for anti-starfighter engagements, and should wipe out the UNSC ships with little difficulty. At that point, they should be able to attack and do serious damage to the unshielded targets before them. In my mind, unless this battle is happening at a great distance such that the UNSC ships might have a bit of an advantage, after the first volley of shots, I think at least half, perhaps even three quarters of the UNSC fleet will be depleted. The Alliance will have lost some of its smaller ships, but I think the larger Mon Cal cruisers will probably still be functional, unless of course the UNSC focus solely on them, in which case the smaller ships will still be effective. When it comes down to it, the point is this, the UNSC cannot do enough damage in its opening salvo to actually cripple the Rebel Alliance's fleet. The Alliance will strike back hard with continual fire, and they should be able to destroy the unshielded UNSC forces. Fighters and the fact that Star Wars ships are a bit more mobile, mostly because they don't need to completely maneuver their ships to fire their main weapon, will allow, at least in my opinion, the Rebel Alliance to take the victory here. So yeah, I say the Alliance wins, and I think they win probably 7.5 times out of 10. Even the larger UNSC ships will fall into concentrated turbo laser fire, especially when, of course, we have starfighters doing serious damage, and I just don't think they have enough numbers to take out the Alliance fleet. That, of course, though, is just one man's opinion, and I'd love to hear what you guys think. Do you think the UNSC would take this? Am I somehow mischaracterizing one of these two forces, or, you know, did I do a good job? Let me know all of that and more down in the comments. Also, don't forget right now to vote in the upper right-hand corner, and let me know who you think would win. Do you have any suggestions for future videos? As always, post those down in comments, and if you see a suggestion you like, make sure to give it a thumbs up and a supporting comment. Anyways, thank you so much for watching guys. As always, may the force be with you.